Hello and welcome back to our decomp tutorial series. Today we are going to be talking about gendered rifle battles and how to create two different battles depending on whether or not you chose boy or girl at the start when you created your new save file. So it's pretty simple. The game obviously does this a number of times so they have code to set it up for us and we're going to dive right in. So we are going to be changing our, our old rival battle we had. We had it set up outside of the house. We're going to be moving it back into the laboratory so that once you're done with your when you get your Pokedex and your Pokeballs and your Pokemon then your May or Brendan graphic is going to come up and it's going to battle you from wherever you're standing. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create the object that is going to hold the May or Brendan sprite. So when we're creating a sprite that has, we're creating an object with a variable sprite, we're going to give it one of these special object event graphics IDs. Now the one that we are using for the player, for the rival object is this var zero one. And we are gonna have to keep it as that var zero one. Uh, we don't actually uh, write var zero anywhere. The code that we use to load the graphics has that inside of it. So that's not something we can change ourselves. I mean, you could probably change it, but uh, uh, it would involve you know, a lot more in-depth coding. But anyway, so we are going to set it to var zero. We are going to give it the flag. Just This is just any flag that you wanna give it. You're gonna to wanna to set it beforehand, before we come in here or on transition, you're gonna to wanna to set the flag so that it doesn't appear. Um, but we are just going to give it this var zero graphics ID and we are going to give it just any old flag. And we're just gonna put it here. We're gonna move it in the code so it doesn't really matter where it is um, because it's gonna to need to come up from different positions because right now, when you pick your ball here, Birch comes to you instead of you going to Birch. So Birch, you're either here, here, or here when it starts. So we need May to come up here, here, or here. But anyway, let's get into it. Um, so to start with, um, after the um, after the uh, Pokédex code is uh, ran, we are going to, this is the initiate Pokédex sequence, and then I've added this extra bit onto it, and rival battle. Um, that's where we're going to be calling this uh, code to trigger this at the end of this. So as soon as you're done with your Pokéball, um, as soon as you get your Pokédex and your Pokéballs, it's going to call. But first, what we need to do is in the map script for the for the map, in the on transition map script, if you do not have one for the map that you're trying to do this in, you need to make a map script on transition in the map scripts and you need to go into that script that you're calling in the map script. If you're confused about map scripts, go back and watch our map script video. Um, and you're going to want to run this call right here, call common event script setup rival graphics ID. And that's the function I was talking about that sets the graphic up in this graphics var zero slot. So whatever this item is, is going to become either the boy or the girl, either May or Brendan, um, graphic sprite when we call this object. Now, first we want to make sure that it's removed, obviously, because we don't want it to show to start with. We want it to be gone for good, for sure. So we're, we also remove it here. Our object ID is five. I should probably give it a local ID name, but it doesn't matter. Um, so we are setting up the graphics ID here in the on transition map script. That's very important. So this is what actually handles changing the the um, the graphic and if that's all you you know the rest of what we're going to be talking about is kind of just more um, a, a little bit more into Pori script there's not any anything complicated so if you are already versed and that's the knowledge you needed you can pause the video now and keep going but we are going to keep talking about this script so here we are going to go. Um, we have this rival battle trigger here but before we call it in this initiate Pokédex sequence, I added a couple lines that are going to, you know, set our um, our rival in the right position because this is the script that moves the professor to you. This is him moving two spots to the left, one spot to the left, and he's just turning left, whether you choose this ball, this ball, or this ball. So if he's moving two spots to the left, then we're also going to want to set object XY, object five, which is again our, our May or our Brendan object, we're going to want to set it to 511 or we're going to want to set the 611 or 711 and that's 511 611 711 you can see down here uh, 511 611 711 anyway so we're going to set the we're going to set the object 
like location and we're also going to add the object back in here um, the player view doesn't include um, that bottom you know if we're right here we obviously can't see that row that we're that we're setting it to we can't see down here so we're going to add it back in during this section as well uh, just because you know, we could add it in later if we wanted to but it doesn't really matter so we're going to keep going now after we uh, set all of that up so we have the graphic we have the object actually back loaded into our map again we are going to check the player gender, which this is just a macro from the event.inc file. Um, and this macro, all it does is just returns either male or female into var result. So we can then check, we can go to if equal to var result male may battle, which if var result is equal to male, it goes to this may battle script. As simple as that. We don't have to do the second one. We could just do go to Brennan battle because if it's not if it's not the May battle, then it's going to be the Brennan battle. But I did another check just because. So we check again and then we go to the Brennan battle. Now in these scripts, again, pretty simple. In the May battle and the Brennan battle, they're pretty much exactly the same except they use different uh, they use different trainer trainer uh, IDs for their teams. That's what controls which actual trainer data that you're fighting against. Um, but to start with, we play the background music. That's the encounter for the rival. We are going to turn the player south so that they are looking for the rival. We're going to apply this movement to the player. This is a common movement for the exclamation mark. And it's just kind of a little cool effect. We get the little exclamation mark above our head. And, uh, you know, it's like an alert. Like, oh, what's going on? And then the rival comes in. So we wait for that movement. Then we move the rival up to us, which this rival move up is just walk up six times. Um, we wait for that movement. We run this delay. I don't even know why I have this here, actually, because it's just from... Uh, it's from the actual uh, rival code for Route 103. It doesn't really matter. But we, after that, we run our trainer battle. It's as simple as that. This is the same trainer battle pretty much that we had in our first little root script. Just a trainer battle single with this trainer May, Trico, with, which this is the trainer if you choose Trico. Now, if you want to have, since this is a nine different starter setup, if you want to have nine different trainer battles all with the different starters, and then you're going to want to have the gender as well. That's 18 different trainer battles. Um, you might not want to have 18 different trainer battles because you, if you're going to do it that way, then you're going to need to have 18 different trainer battles for every rival encounter, which is a lot of trainers to set up and uh, it's a lot of space as well. So you might not want to do it like that, uh, but if you want to, of course, you can just set up a series of conditional statements to handle the 18 different trainer battles that you want. I am not going to go over it now because I don't think that's how you should do this. If this is the way you're going, I think you should maybe have three different trainer teams max uh, just for all nine of the starters. Um, but it's always up to you. You can add as much as you want into the game as you need, but anyway... The important thing is after this battle is over, we're going to run rival battle over, and this is just going to display another message box. The rival is going to leave, which is just walk down six times. We're going to set the rival's flag again just to make sure that it's set. We are going to set the little root state variable to three because that's just what we need for our setup that we've been making in this tutorial series so far. And then we're going to remove object, which is going to actually take it off the map because just walking it down is not going to remove it. We have to remove it ourselves. So it's pretty simple. Um, again, the main part of the rival uh, of, of the graphics for the uh, the different having two different rivals is this common event script, set up rival graphics ID that takes over the slot for uh, the graphics var zero. So if you have a graphics var zero sprite, it is going to be replaced with the rival graphic when you run that common event script. Pretty simple, pretty simple. We are going to take a quick look at how it actually looks in game. We can run through this quick setup real quick. Da -da 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 -da. And here we will see it happen. There's our exclamation mark. May runs up to us, gives us a text box, and then battles us with Torchic. And when it's over, she walks away 
and disappears as we see. Um, now that wasn't the cleanest. The text was running off the side and it, you probably want to close the text before May walks away, but it doesn't really matter for the purpose of this tutorial. Um, just, you know, make sure that yours is clean if you're actually releasing <laughs> it as a game, but uh, it doesn't matter. So anyway, that is uh, rival graphics depending on the gender of the player. Pretty simple. Two main things you need to take advantage of are the check player gender macro and the common event script rival graphics, rival setup rival graphics ID. Um, it's very simple, uh, not complicated at all. Um, if you have any questions about it though, make sure to leave a comment on the video or in our Discord. 